In this video, I'm going to be sharing with you exactly what a cover two style defense means and what the zones do on the cover two zone. What's going on guys? My name is Cody and I want to thank you for taking the time to watch this video. If this is your first time visiting my channel, my channel is focusing on helping people become the best Madden players they can become. And Madden 22 comes out this week. We are going to be streaming. We are going to be having ebooks out. We are going to be having a ton of fun on the channel. So make sure to subscribe if you have not already because you're going to get access to all of our Madden 22 exclusive content. Now real quick before I dive too deep into the video, I wanted to let you know that our true fan members are actually going to receive my first offensive and defensive ebook completely for free. Now my true fan member membership is just five bucks a month. Um, it's a Patreon. You can unsubscribe from it or, un or cancel it, whatever you want. Um, it's just five bucks a month to get it. And basically what happens there is we actually release 12 exclusive videos that I don't release on my YouTube channel, that I don't release on my text message membership um, for free uh, to their, or, or for the for the true fan members. And what we're doing for Madden 22 is if you sign up for the true fan membership before August 12th, my first Madden 22 offensive and defensive guide that will be launching between August 12th and August 19th um, so that you'll be ready to go day one is going to be available on our uh, on our true fan membership page completely for free so if you haven't joined the true fan membership yet this would be a great month for you to be able to do that with everything that we've got going for madden 22. okay guys so what i wanted to talk about today is the cover two zone and the reason why i wanted to do this is this is basically um you know this is basically something i wanted to do for the madden 22 training camp series help you understand exactly what a cover two style zone is how it works and how you can attack it from really any different, all, all kinds of different uh, route concepts. So we're just gonna pick Bucks Post Trail here. And I'm actually gonna come out in the Big Nickel Over G. And the reason why is because I actually released an ebook um, on the Big Nickel Over G because I think the Big Nickel Over G is gonna be the best defense in Madden 22 um, for several different reasons. And if you've not gotten my Madden 21 Big Nickel Over G defensive guide, you can get that down in the description. A lot of those concepts are gonna be able to work well in Madden 22. That being said, let's jump into the video here, and I'm just gonna pick a traditional cover two and kind of go over the different types of zones you have. Now there's two, there's um, kind of three different types of cover two, and I'm gonna jump into concept here and just try to show you. So if I go to cover two, you'll see that there's there's um, three, three to four different types of cover two. The first one is cover Tampa two, all right? Um, the second one is cover two sink. And then the third one is cover two hard flat. And then occasionally out of like some four, four or three, four bear style formations, you'll get this cover two invert, which is a similar, more similar to a cover three than it is to a cover two. It's just that the middle safety plays a little bit more underneath. So that being said, let's dive into the big nickel over G. And the biggest thing that changes out of the cover two is actually the outside corners, what type of flat zone they're gonna be playing. So we're gonna pick just cover two here. And here's what you're gonna see. So I'm just gonna show the play art. And if you take a look on the corners on the left side, you're gonna see that they are in cloud flats. The two uh, underneath middle defenders are in vertical hooks. And then the middle linebacker there, the mic, is gonna be into a middle read zone. Now I have zone drops on, so these are gonna kind of change how these are gonna work. So I'm actually gonna go back and take those off first. And then I'll actually put them back on and go over how both of these work. We actually did for Madden 21 and something that's going to carry over into Madden 22. We're actually going to update it. We actually did a defensive encyclopedia where we literally break down every single zone and what it does. Not just the big picture concept, but also the, um, you know, every specific, like what does a cloud flat do? What does a soft spot do? And on and on and on. So that being said, let's dive into this. So again, so I've got Tampa 2, I've got cloud flats on the outside these are not zone dropped and then what you can actually do with this is a couple of different things the first thing that you can do and one of the most popular adjustments is to take this guy right here and put him into the deep middle just like this and then as you notice here it's going to leave kind of a vulnerability over the middle of the field so we can take one of our defensive linemen and put him into a bluff blitz and as you see he's going to be now in a three rec hook zone now basically what a cover two defense is is a cover two defense is a two high look and five underneath zones. This is meant to stop some of the underneath style passing concepts that a lot of people like to use. One of my other favorite adjustments to do out of this, especially if you wanna stop pretty much everything anyone can do underneath, is to take both defensive ends and put them on hard flats, just like this right here, and then you're gonna use her over the middle of the field. This is gonna pretty much take away everything underneath 
And then your responsibility is if you see a post on the field or a vertical, you're going to have to play that deep middle kind of robber zone. Now, uh, what does a cloud flat do? Well, what a cloud flat do, uh, does is it has outside leverage. So uh, what that basically looks like is if I take the square receiver on this play and I run him on a streak, I want you to watch what happens. The cloud flat is going to jam him and shove him to the inside, and it's going to be really hard for me to throw that. Obviously, I was able to complete that, but it's still a tight window of throw. Now, the other thing that a cloud flat does is, as you notice there, it will always, at least 99.9% .9 of the time, fight to get outside release. The one challenge with this is if the uh, wide receiver runs a fade, so for example, for verticals, you'll see this wide receiver on the right is running a fade, that is an outside releasing route. So the cover two, he gets outside, he fights for that outside release, and as you can see, that's the biggest vulnerability in the cover two defense. So the way that you can kind of combat that um, is because Cloud Flats, as a general rule, will always play outside to inside unless they have that specific type of fade route. So let me show you this route on the other side of the field. And I'm just gonna press here. Um, but I just wanna show you the square receiver. Snap the ball, throw it. And you see here that it's a little bit tighter of a window of a throw that might even be a click on interception. So what you can do with this cover two is you can kind of piece together different strategies uh, to make this really effective. And this is where the soft squat zone really comes in handy, especially for plays like four verticals. So the cloud flat is gonna generally kind of be an outside releasing zone that is gonna take away things like corner routes, curl routes even. Um, they're typically gonna take away things like comeback routes, corner routes, C routes. Those are kind of the best things. So for example, um, if I were to run the X receiver on a comeback route, and then I took the circle receiver and ran him on a drag route, this is a great zone to be able to stop this. If you take a look at that cloud flat, you see he's gonna drift back and he makes that a really tight throw. And if I click on the receiver, I might be able to get an interception. Another thing that I wanna quickly point out about cloud flat zones, um, especially if you're not gonna be doing zone drops, is if you look at this left side, um, you'll see here I have a C route. And just watch what this cloud flat will do to the C route. You'll see he drifts right back into it and plays it fairly well. Mike Evans happened to make a great catch but he's obviously in position to be able to make that catch. So now we come to the part where, how do we deal with that wide side of the field fade route that a lot of people like to go to to beat the cover two? My favorite adjustment out of cover two, if you're just playing kind of cover two, first and foremost is this three rec right here so that I can be free to go back and cover anything over the middle with my user. Um, I'm gonna basically play the deep middle, basically is how this would work out. But then what I also like to do is I actually like to take the corner and, and hot route him. So Davis, you see here, I'm going to hot route him to a soft squat zone. And this is where I want to introduce the soft squat logic. So what a soft squat is going to do is a soft squat, as long as you don't zone drop it, if there is no underneath route, meaning like there's no wheel route, there's no table route, there's no flat route, the soft squat defender is going to basically match coverage the circle receiver on the outside. So you see right here, watch, he matches him now, and now you can't throw that ball. Um, that's my favorite little adjustment out of the cover too, especially if I wanna be very safe against people who are running these concepts. Because what people will do though, is they'll run something uh, essentially like a Y cross concept. So they might run something like this uh, on that side. Uh, but what you're going to see here is that's a 10 yard route and then I'm going to put a vertical, um, I, I'm going to put this vertical uh, streak. So I make my soft squat adjustment and then I'm going to just put this down the deep middle third and then put the three rack hook out there. And this is a really tough defense to beat. So if you watch this now, the out route, when the out route cuts to the outside, he'll actually leave him. But by the time he leaves him, it's actually too late. He actually made a great catch there. The Bucks are just catching everything. But it's actually too late. So if we take a look at this in instant replay, and this is why I really like this adjustment to the wide side of the field, um, he'll actually climb with this. So again, he climbs, he climbs, he climbs, and then now he passes off. Well, at this point right here, yes, you can throw this ball, but it's a tight window. And as you see right here, you know, I mean, he makes a great catch, but that could potentially be a click on interception. So that's kind of how the soft squat works. Now, I will say this, if they were to run a flat, and this is why this is really good for primarily like a four verticals um, approach. If someone's really, um, you know, hitting you over the top of four verticals, 
but what you do is you put that soft squat out there. Now, if you watch this fade uh, to the circle receiver, if I, because I put that flat right out there, it's going to get that a little quicker. Um, you'll see the soft squat will kind of come down on this a little bit faster, but it's still a tighter window than it originally was with that just base press release on that cloud flat. Now, a little pro tip for, uh, for you guys is what you can do with manually moving players. So, for example, if I want that, remember we talked about the cloud flat and we want the cloud flat to be outside release. Um, that's really what we want to do. You'll see here that if I base a line, you see that this right side guy comes inside. So it's not really a great look for us, but it's actually a great look on the left side because you see how much more outside he is. So what I like to do is just basically manually drag this guy to the outside. Now what you'll see is if they try to go with that fade route to circle, you see that they it's really, really hard to get that ball out there. Um, and that's another way that you can kind of combat that approach. So that is um, a little bit about the outside parts of the cover two. Now I want to shift focus and I want to talk about the inside zones of the cover two. So the vertical hook zones are really one of my favorite zones in the game. And the reason why is because they do a phenomenal job on things like curl routes to the slot, uh, post route, anything to the slot receiver, they will do a really good job of. So you'll see here I'm going to put a hitch out there to triangle. And if you watch this vertical hook, um, he's actually going to come down and make a, make a tackle. Now, if you, if you put zone drops on, those vertical hooks will play um, wherever you put them in that zone drop. So if I put a five-yard zone drop, he would actually play the hitch and not the curl route. Um, right there, because it's a default, he's always going to default to the higher route on the field. The other thing that I like about ver or, um, or uh, these, these vertical hook zones is if you see something like this route right here, this route concept on the right, they do a really good job against like spot routes and really anything to the numbers. If you take a look here, and I'll show this one more time, uh, Brady ended up not being able to get the ball out. Well, let me just show you. And again, I'm just gonna, for the purpose of this video, um, I'm gonna put these guys just out of the way because I just want you to see the actual coverage. And I want you to watch circle here. So you see this route is really, really good against Mabel, but you see how that vert hook jumps him? There, here's the biggest thing that I can tell you about a vertical hook. The vertical hook will always drift is the most outside drifting yellow zone in the game. So what that means is on the zone grid system that Madden has created, the vertical hook zone is going to always go the most outside. For example, if I audible over to a cover three, you're going to see that this is going to give me the hook curl zone. That is different than the vertical hook zone. Hook curls play a little bit more inside, vertical hooks play more outside. The vertical hook zone, essentially, if you take a look at the zone, it will play anything over the middle from the hash mark, okay, from this hash mark right here, to the numbers. And I'll show you what I'm talking about. So I'm going to take David and just get him out of the way. And I want you to watch this um, curl route to the running back. So I've got a curl, and this is inside the hash, okay? And then I've got that, um, that uh, let's just call it a hitch out here. And then I'm just going to take Brown and put him on a vertical. Okay. So watch which one the vertical hook will choose. It'll always choose the one that is closest to the numbers. So you see right there. And then it kind of drifts back down. So the vertical hook zone is the best zone in the game for defending things like anything really that's going to come over the middle in that area of the field. So an example is obviously the hitch route. Um, another one that the vertical hook is really good at defending is if you take a look at the slot receiver here, the X, um, he's on a post. Watch this vertical hook climb with the post, and they really do a good job of sitting on the post route. So they do a good job against like slot posts. Um, another zone or another thing that they do really good against is things like these deep dig routes. So, uh, for example, if I take circle and I put him on a dig and then maybe drag X, um, just watch how circle is going to respond. You're going to see, see how that vertical hook really sits right on that cut. Again, because it's the it's inside the numbers. It's from the numbers to the hash mark. That's where that zone is going to play the best. Now, if there is no underneath route, this is really important for four verticals. If there is no underneath route, I want you to watch how this works. This is if they are not... Um, this is if they are not zone dropped. What you're going to notice is actually the vertical hook primarily because of the running back. So I'm just going to block the running back and just show this real quick. There's no vert there's no underneath threat. And I'm just going to straight triangle. I want you to watch the vertical hooks. You'll see here they typically will climb um, up to a point and then they'll basically pass them off 
to the this is why the best adjustment from cover two um, and what most people like to do you notice the mid read can't quite get back all the way so the easy adjustment is just to say okay I'm gonna put this guy into a deep middle zone and now those vertical hooks really can drift back and play um, in a unique way because the mid read zone is really in my opinion one of the worst zones in the game this year um, and I think it's gonna be the same next year it's been one of the worst zones in Madden for years because it just doesn't get the proper depth so what you're gonna see now is now that I don't have that mid read out there watch these vertical hooks play you see they match these guys up the seam they match these guys up the seam so a pro tip from a cover two perspective if you want to be able to really lock down four verticals out of cover two is really simple all you're gonna do is you're gonna blitz this guy right here blitz your user which is obviously a tip that we've been given out all year now I want you to watch how they defend four verticals there's no mid read on the field so the zone logic has to shift to imitate the zones that are on the field watch what happens watch them just take these um, you see how it just takes this streak vertical and it's a catch tackle maybe a swat click on interception they match the vertical routes um, as long as there's nothing underneath now let me just show you kind of a tag off of this that you might see and that would be to basically go to four verticals and we're just going to put square on a drag and r1 on a wheel route and i want you to watch the difference um, in terms of how this goes snap of the ball you see here that they when there's an underneath route whether it be a wheel route or a uh, drag route those vertical hooks won't they won't go they won't go up the seams unfortunately um, they won't always go deep to short like that so for example if they take a, a the running back put him on option route watch the right side vertical hook you see um, here he actually did sit on it but he typically um, and, and it might be because we're taking a receiver versus a running back but let me show you what we did on the left side so I'm just gonna drag drag the um, the square receiver watch triangle you'll see they go to the square and triangles left wide open so that is kind of the logic behind these vertical hooks if you don't drop them into a zone drop of 10 or whatever so that's kind of the the thinking behind it is if you're playing cover two um, and if you're defending a spread set one of my favorite little things to do um, is to put a soft squat on the right and then to blitz my user and the reason why is because if they run four verticals on me you're gonna see right here we're gonna play it fairly well it's gonna take everything away all I've got to worry about now is the underneath route to the running back the one issue with this is once they start to figure out kind of what you're doing one other little pro tip that you can simply do well I'm just gonna I'm actually just gonna leave like this but um, what you're also gonna notice here is the biggest thing you're gonna to have to worry about is something like this right here this is a, a skinny pose with a drag maybe a curl um, we'll just do a curl flat on the left something like this route combo this is the this is something that's really good for this and this is where you're gonna to have to watch with your user so see how the underneath zones really pull the vertical hooks down and that skinny post is one-on-one -on -one with your user so if you see a skinny post on the play that's kind of your responsibility within a cover two defense that's really what the whole point of the mid read is but when you understand how these vertical hooks work, I think you're going to have a lot more success because um, one of the things that you're going to notice is this vertical hook zone is actually fairly effective, especially when we talk about covering um, these deep streaks, seam streaks. Notice real quick there, I just put the running back on a table route, so a real underneath route, and the vertical hook didn't go with him, okay? Because that, that, that um, it, it registered as an underneath pattern in his grid remember his grid an option route is not in his grid why because the option route as you take a look at this um, if you take a look at this the option route is going to be inside the hash remember it's hash to numbers so if I run him on a little quick flat it's actually better if they're going to match this because watch what happens you'll see the vertical hook sit and now I've got a window to be able to throw to the square receiver obviously Brady doesn't have gunslinger but I could have hit that route so that is kind of how the cover two defense works. Um, hard flats is really a risky, in my opinion, a risky play call. There are things you can do off of this. Um, one of my favorite little adjustments actually is to take these, um, if you take these hard flats out here, you see here we're gonna put them in hard flats. And what hard flat does is it really traps underneath flat routes. So like if they're, if they're maybe they are trying to hit you know, I don't know if they're maybe running curl flat or whatever, but if you watch this X, 
you're going to see that hard flat really sits out there and will take that. He'll typically intercept it. They play rarely do you call this coverage, um, but if you do want to call this coverage, one of my pro tips for this, um, if you're going to do this, you can just simply shade the coverage down and you see that it creates these hard flats. And then what you can do is you can actually run a seam flat adjustment just like this. And the reason why I like the seam flat adjustment is because it's actually going to do a really good job, in, especially against 2x2 two two spread of matching. So you see here if I run four verticals, see how the seam flat goes with him? That's kind of a little bit of a pro tip. And then, But if they run like a corner route, so let's say they run like a corner route out of that because that's the other little pro thing that they're going to do um, if they're running this. Obviously, if they're in a fade, they have it. They have this burned over the top. But if they run a corner route to X and they run like a smoke screen to circle and they run a vertical here, this actually will defend this okay. You'll see the seam flat. It, it does get beat, but it does kind of put itself in a position where it can potentially make a play. So that's a little bit of a pro tip. Um, if you're going to do that again, really important when you're running cover two to understand this is a five underneath coverage, meaning there's only two people in the vertical deep. Now I would tell you that, um, especially if you put this middle linebacker in the, in the deep blue, just like this, and maybe you use your white head here, and then you drop the defensive end into a vertical hook. Now you've basically created essentially the same coverage. Um, the only difference is now again, they can high-low people out of curl flat. So um, this is another combination. It's real simple. Um, you'll see here, vertical hook does a good job. They sit on the curl, but we can take the underneath route to the curl flat. So one little kind of thing that you can do um, out of this, again, another potential opportunity um, would be to take that deep blue there. And then what you can actually do is put two curl flats from your defensive ends uh, or two hard flats like I was talking about before and now you just don't have a vertical hook defender on the left side But if they run four verticals on you um, You're gonna be in pretty good shape anyway because that middle linebacker will basically split the seams and take this away So all in all the cover two coverage is really effective if you understand exactly how to use it The biggest things that beat cover two deep are the one play scores where they basically can throw fade routes on the outside. The other little thing that they can do, and I haven't talked about this yet, but if there's no vertical threat on the field to the left side, what you should see is this deep safety basically glitch out, and I can throw this skinny post over the top for a one-play score. So the biggest thing you have to watch out for if you're defending in a cover two defense is either the seam streaks, or I'm sorry, the outside fade routes, or the deep posts. You take those two routes away with your user or your alignment or your soft squat adjustment, you're going to have a lot of success in this coverage. So that is how a cover two defense works. Obviously, zone drops are a little bit different. We covered that more in our defensive encyclopedia. Um, but as a general rule, cover two is a great coverage every single year if you understand exactly how the cloud flat adjustment works and how you can actually protect your cover two from getting manipulated by different streaks and different post routes.